Today, we were here with some amazing humans to talk about magic at play in Chicago. So first of all, we have Paula. Hi. And Paula and I have not been. And then we have returning is Ashley. Hello. And Anna. Hi. So before we start, Anna, this is your first time on the podcast with us. So why don't you give us your name, your house, and where we can find you on social media? Uh, So my name is Anna. I am a Hufflepuff. And as I'm sure we'll get into it, Ashley Smith, (laughs) I'm the Hufflepuffiest Hufflepuff based on some pictures we took. (laughs) And I am on social media at the Latina Hufflepuff on Instagram. Ooh. See, because now I'm curious because who is more Hufflepuff, Paula or Anna? Well, my Patronus is a badger. Yeah, mine's a, <laughs> a whore. <laughs> what, what's yours, Paula? Uh, a dapple gray mare. <laughs> See, I think if you have a badger Patronus, you kind of like are set for life. You're like, nope, I'm a Hufflepuff, no questions asked. Yep. (laughs) I've never even been on a horse. I don't even think I've been near a horse, to be honest with you. Really? Oh, I used to always go horseback riding. Do horses horses scare scare you in any way? No. They scare me. There's some, like, people that, like, get these Patronuses, Patroni, Patronuses, (laughs) and then they're like, I am terrified of this specific animal. Like, for me, I feel like it should be a frog, a lizard, a snake, a reptile. I don't know. I feel like a frog is appropriate, especially with how many times you're rescuing frogs out of your house. All the That's time. true. Trevor. So why don't we start both of your initial impressions of magic at play? I think Ashley and I had different impressions. I genuinely enjoyed it. And I have an extremely stressful mug of life and so I'm also like working still um so I to me this was really an escape where I just kind of let myself be silly have fun and literally took pictures of everything imaginable <laughs> with that have you been to any of the other experiences nope okay. I haven't done the forbidden forest I haven't done the New York store I haven't done any of the exhibitions this has have you been, been to the parks? One. I haven't to the parks. The last time I went to the parks was the Sunday before they closed for COVID. Okay, so it's wow. been some time. Mm-hmm. Time for you to come back. I am supposed to be back next November. All right. So I would agree with Anna. Like I really enjoyed myself as well. I thought it was really fun. I um. I wasn't really sure what to expect going into it. Like, I feel like they kind of kept it under wraps for quite some time. Like even some of the like early, like, uh, renderings, you know, we kind of got a sense of, Oh, there's maybe going to be some Quidditch things or some interactive stuff. Um, but until it happened, I feel like there wasn't a lot of media around what it was going to be like. So, um, I agree. I think part of like why I had such a good time is that I went with Anna. My husband was there too, um, but he was like mostly like our photographer (laughs) and uh, just like hanging out, experiencing it. But like, honestly, like the best part was going with Anna, like, because the two of us could completely nerd out about everything. Like we're like, look at that, look at this, let's take a picture here. You know? So I think that um, a, a big part of the enjoyment was like truly going with a friend and then experiencing like all these magical things I do feel like you have to know Harry Potter like to to enjoy it like I think there isn't a lot of um there isn't a lot of like descriptions of anything or like uh context so I sort of feel like you have to know the story of Harry Potter a little bit to like show up and be like this is Privet Drive and like be really excited about things um not that I think you would seek this out if you weren't a Harry Potter fan but yeah that's 
that was kind of like my initial impression was I had an amazing time. It was very magical. Um, yeah. So since you've been to both the exhibition and Magic at Play, uh, like, are they similar? Uh, did you like one more than the other? And if you did, why? <laughs> yeah, that's a great question. So that is where, like, when I start to think about it a little bit more critically or, like, in, in like, retro reflection. Um, so I have been to the Harry Potter exhibition. I've done um, a lot of other, like, Harry Potter experiences. Like, I've done the New York store. I've done um, the studio tour in California and in uh, London. So I will, a lot to compare it to. Um, so... For me, I do feel like this experience, like if you don't live like near Chicago and you don't have kids and you're not going to go with someone, I think that like it's kind of expensive for what it is. So the tickets, like the base ticket, um, I think is like $37.50 for adults. And then like with fees, it comes up to basically 50 bucks, um, which is what we paid to go to the exhibition. And I think that the exhibition just had a lot more uh, stuff that you could like absorb. There was a lot more stuff to read, like tidbits about filming. And there was a lot more, there was props, like actual props that you'd see like at the studio tour, uh, which this didn't have. Everything was kind of just created specifically for Magic at Play. Um, it was interactive, but different in a different way than the exhibition was. The price changes on certain days. So some days it looks like they have the deal of the $37.50 and it's not like a big uh-huh. difference, but it looks like the majority of times it's $42.50 and the child ticket is only discounted to $34. Oh, maybe that's why like when I paid, it was like whatever I paid with these, we paid like $50, right, Anna? Yeah, it was, it was like 50. $47 something. Which they also have a premium ticket which I think includes like a coat check and skip the line. And yeah. And it includes like a, a tote, tote Cause bag. that's the one that Bailey got. Yes. yes. That's mm-hmm. 67 50 per person. Yeah. It's so it's a lot. I will say like, if you're going with a family, which I think is like, in my opinion, like an ideal thing, like if you're, if you're local and you can go with someone again, because for me, I felt like a lot of the magic was experiencing it with someone if I was going just on my own, um, I might not have like had as much fun or felt as like, I think it would have been still immersive. Um, but it's definitely fun to share that with someone. Um, yeah. And I, so I think like, and if you have kids, it's amazing because there's like slides, there's stuff to climb. There's like this, um, basically like a tri-wizard maze that you go through, um there's like all sorts of classes like you can do like a potions class so there's a lot of interactive things for kids to do and adults of course but and the adults go down the slide this has been my main question yes my husband did it (laughs) and you have to like hoist yourself up it's like a it's like an obstacle course you have to like zigzag (laughs) back in front to go in and it's hard for an adult because there was that other girl that did the slide and she yeah. was struggling. Yeah, because you have to adults, like, literally if you can fit in the obstacle up. course, adults can go down the slide. Mm-hmm. Just prepared to be ridiculously shocked. Things so don't thing. yeah. wear. And a Anna dress. does the no. Don't wear a dress unless you have shorts underneath. But Anna, yeah, we did, learned um, that the hard way. <laughs> yeah, Anna did the tangle thing. Like there was basically this. Yeah like crisscross of bungee cords that was meant to mimic something in like the maze. Anna did it and finished. I almost died. <laughs> I almost <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> because like I, I was wearing videos. boots and my bag and a dress. <laughs> Your purse was getting stuck. I know. At one point I just like took off my purse and my wand and just threw them at Ashley. But then the <laughs> buckle on my boots kept getting stuck on the bungee cords. <laughs> And then I'm like, I can't bend over that low. So let me try to pull these up. So that yeah. was also a feat, but I made it through. That was my so workout there, for like the month. Cause it was. And there is like the burrow is there um, near the tri, like near the tri wizard area. And that I think is, is like, like a play gym thing. We did not attempt to do that. It looked small. So I think kids. So I'm thinking. Don't wear your normal Harry Potter gear. Go for like if you were going to recess. I so I would say 
It, yes and no. Like if you want to really like play on all the stuff, then do, maybe don't, maybe like tone it down a little. But I also feel like this is, to me, this is very much like if you're an adult Harry Potter fan, this is like the Instagram candy. It's like an Instagram experience. There's so many spots to take photos, get content. Um, it's basically just set up for all these like little sections of getting really cool photos. So I actually think it's better if you wear a themed outfit that you could like put yourself into all these different scenes and you can just skip through like going through the tangle thing. You don't have to go on the slide or do any of that to like get going through to on the, the next slide. Area. Yeah. Yes. Well, <laughs> not a question going on. I mean, slide. I don't think I could hoist myself up there, but <laughs> Here it is. Yeah. So like to just kind of give like a general layout, this is across multiple floors in the corner of Water Tower, which is a shopping mall mm-hmm. in Chicago. So you actually go in on the second floor because the first floor is, of course, the merch store. So you go in on the second floor and you have like a hallway that you check on my Instagram. I posted that hallway that kind of introduces you into the world of magic at play. And then you go from there up the escalators to privet drive and then you go through there to platform nine and three quarters to the black lake to the great hall then to the classrooms then to quidditch then to the forbidden you go down to the forbidden forest Mm -hmm. and the lego and then you go down to the um triwizard maze maze yeah and then you go down to the down to the merch store or was that the ground floor same floor yeah same, same or floor. same level yeah. yeah there's some up and down and so it's like three fours maybe oh and there's four. well before like after you go through the great hall there's the sorting hat area too oh yeah which is I really cool that. actually yeah like that i said so it, for taking pictures it's amazing too like it's we discovered that you like I don't think you maybe you're not supposed to I don't know <laughs> we take did the sorting hat off the hook and like put it directly on your head which was really cool because it's like got the, the authentic like vibe of the sorting hat um and we got a lot of good pictures there yeah so when you walk in they give you a little card with a QR code because you can take your own pictures um but then they have like install cameras like at the sorting hat as well as at the Quidditch pitch, they have green mm-hmm. screens to like put in there that you're flying on the pit Quidditch pitch. You can take as many pictures as you want. We took about a hundred. <laughs> yeah. Aside they from were, our they were pictures. roasting us. Yeah, they're roasting us at the end. She's like, this is the most photos I've seen anyone ever take. You were also well, there the first day, so I guarantee yeah. you that it was like on the broom like this, like posing. Yeah, actually, it's just because when we looked at the pictures at the end, you can like see which ones you want. Because with your ticket, the you get a shot at the Great Hall with the stained glass window and the um, podium, the eagle, mm-hmm. the owl podium, yeah. and the sorting hat. And you actually get those digital pictures for free. So any other pictures you want, you wouldn't have to pay for. So, of course, we're looking at the pictures, and Ashley just kept asking to blow up all of my pictures with the sorting hat on the Quidditch (laughs) pitch, flying on the broom. Like, literally the most Hufflepuff. She's here posing. She looks, like, so precious. I'm just like, how? How do you look this cute right now? I love how you guys are like, we were doing these cute little poses. We were adorable. And then Paula and I are like, we hid behind furniture. Totally. I did hear about that in the last podcast. But that's, I think I would be like that too. I would take as many pictures as I could just to. Anna got the, um, the photo pass too. Like in, because there are so many photos, like it was definitely like at, what did what what did you pay for that photo pass? Forty bucks for a day. Forty four bucks. Yeah, so forty bucks. Taxes. You got all of the photos basically. Yeah. So if you like oh, maximize it and you go with a group and you all scan, like the same. You know, yeah. Only- now that would make sense, especially for like people that don't always have, not necessarily a person to take pictures, but the right person to take pictures. <laughs> And that does make a difference. It yeah. makes a huge difference. Well, it's kind of cool because the people there, one thing I loved, um, well, there's a lot of things I loved, but it was really great that the people who were working there um, like offered to take your photos. Like you didn't even have to ask. Mm-hmm. Like we were like trying to make my husband do it sometimes. And they're like, oh, we can get it. And 
they were saying how they know all the right angles to take photos from. And like, I just, I really appreciate that because like sometimes when you solo travel or you're just, you know, you and your friend, it's like a selfie doesn't necessarily capture the essence of everything. Especially when there's like a bigger thing. And that's something they've gotten a lot better about because we had it a little at the Atlanta exhibition because Philadelphia, there wasn't really like anyone taking pictures. Um, But Forbidden Forest, people were everywhere, like in every like stand, like with the buck Uh beak, with anything that had like a moment to stop and really have like a good picture. There was someone there that was offering to take photos. Oh, yeah. See, that's so nice. Like makes a big difference, I feel like. It does. I'm like one of those people that have, I have previously traveled a lot. And like, I look back at trips, I'm like, there are zero photos of me. I have pictures of a lot of stuff. I have pictures of a lot of me at things. One of the spots that that I really liked that I hadn't seen before at any of the other exhibits or tours or anything is that they did do the Black Lake. Yeah. And that's such a perfect photo. Like that is like the one photo op that I would love to have. I just want to go to take a picture on the little boats. Yeah, that's what I want. It's it's really cute. And they take like your picture from like a couple angles and stuff. That was... Super yeah, that cute. was the one I saw. I'm like, that's the one I want. I I I, I can pass on a lot of things, <laughs> but that's the photo I want. I want somebody to punt me across the lake. <laughs> I'll never forget. Yeah, and they have, they have some of their picture picture. picture. That was, and it was like yeah. very recently. Oh my god! Punting. They're not kicking you across the lake. Yeah. What was each of your favorite part? I had a lot of fun at the. Quidditch pitch I just think because it was just the energy like everyone was just like being silly and posing with the brooms and Ashley and I were just cracking up because we're like this is so awkward we had the so, we're so awkward and then you yeah. had they had the like elevated rooms to pose that you're flying so the mm-hmm. prop room section was just awkward but it was fun it was yeah, it was awkward, but it was. <laughs> and then they have I, the real brooms. Yeah, yeah. You could choose to ride a fireball or a nimbus. Oh, that's cool. Even had, and which yeah, one even, did each of you choose? I posed with both. Yeah, same. Yeah, that's, <laughs> that's how extra we are. There were people <laughs> like behind us. <laughs> yeah, people were waiting for us to be done, and we're like, nope, picture, picture, picture. <laughs> I have just accepted that we're always going to be those people. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And um and then I really enjoy the Forbidden Forest because what they have is that they give you mm-hmm. a black light lantern, Agrid lantern with a black light. So you go into the Forbidden Forest and you can scan your you scan the lantern against the walls and you'll see Aragog, you'll see Fane, you'll see the Patronuses roaming That's around cool. the um the mm-hmm. Forbidden Forest. Um you also will come across a Dementor. So we had a lot of fun with that. A lot of it was just fun because like we made it fun. Like the potions yeah. classroom was fun because it's very like sights and smells and texture. So you could play with a lot of things. But then just taking turns and posing and taking pictures and switching and everything, waiting for mm-hmm. kids to move out of the way or pausing when a kid like runs up to my cauldron I almost I was like stirring a cauldron the kid just ran up and stuck his hand and I was like oh no <laughs> I like stopped and not squished their finger yeah it's like um, Paula's real like <laughs> listen I did not direct my attention towards the child I directed my attention towards the parent because I did not want a random child in my video not because yeah. it's my video but somebody else's child and my page is public yeah. yeah for their protection yeah yeah <laughs> I think my favorite part I think had to be I really liked the forbidden forest too just because I hadn't experienced anything like that before I thought the black light thing with the lantern was really neat um I also thought it was cute, like the little, little mini great hall that they made, I thought was very cute because you can just like, you know, set up a video where you're opening, like Anna and I opened the great hall together and we're just like being nerdy, like dancing around and um, having fun. I've got to like post my videos of that stuff, but I just thought it was like really pretty. They had like house traits on each wall and 
I love seeing like the, that stained glass area with like uh Dumbledore's podium, like the owl podium, um, seeing that is just so beautiful. So I think probably the, um, I really liked the great hall in the forbidden forest area. So as of right now, this is going on until the end of January. Yeah. Would you go back? Well, you're going back, right? You said. Yeah, I'm going to go with my nieces. I think I, I, um, I think it'll be really interesting slash fun, really fun to do it with kids too. I think for the same reason that Anna and I had fun together was like, I think we just embraced like being kids and like, you know, kind of nourishing your inner child a little bit and just like having fun with it all. I think I'll be able to do that with uh, my nieces as well. And they're really into Harry Potter. Like my oldest niece is um, reading, I think she's on the fifth book right now. So she's reading it. I've been like getting her the illustrated books and um, kind of trying to nourish that a little bit for her. Um, So I think she's very excited to do it. Um, Would I go back again, just on my own? Um, I'm not sure that I would simply because it was $50. I feel like it's really expensive. Um, and it's interesting because even Anna and I went basically opening day in the evening of opening day and there are already things broken, like in the maze, <laughs> the, the extendable ears are broken off the wall, like the yeah. Marauder's mat footprints on the ground were already peeling up. Like, so there was already some things that I'm like, oh, this is not going to like last <laughs> once kids really get in here. So I don't know. I think, again, if if there were some like Potter friends that were coming in, I'd probably like do it. Like it'd be a fun experience with friends. Um, I don't think I'd go on my own. However, I will amend. I think previously Danny asked like, oh, would you recommend this for like solo person? I will say now. So I don't know how long it's going to last, but opening, I think it's like this Friday is um, Chicago has a like arcade bar replay. And they're doing their very merry Harry Christmas thing. Um, So it's basically like a Harry Potter pop-up bar. So I think if you come to Chicago for the weekend and you can do Magic at Play, the Harry Potter pop-up bar, it's like you could get a good fun Potter weekend. Um, And there's a lot to do in Chicago in general. Um, But I would try, like, if you're going to come in for it, I try to, like, add something to that experience. Anna, would you do it again? I think I would do it again if same as Ashley, if like friends came into town, because like I thought about taking my boyfriend to it because he's also a Potter fan, not nearly as much as me, but he does (laughs) like it as well. But it wouldn't. I love him to death, but it probably because he's not as big of a fan wouldn't be something he enjoys. So I think if it is um, with equally passionate friends then I would definitely go again um I do think that piling it in with the replay pop-up is a good idea because they do a really good job this is the third year they're doing the Harry Potter it's a very merry Harry Christmas Mm -hmm. at this pop-up bar and the first year they did it they had all these different sections of the stories so they had the great hall in the back and some of them, they, they have um, like a honeydukes. They have an Ollivanders and honeydukes is a snack bar and they have mm-hmm. hog's head, which is the bar in the back. And then they have the main bar in the front and they have themed drinks, which sound weird when you read the descriptions, but they're, they're so delicious mm-hmm. and they're house themed. So mm-hmm. like the first year they had it based on the founders. I remember I had quite a few Salazar, Salazar Slytherins. I had the Rowenas. The Rowenas were really good. <laughs> yeah. And then this past year that they did it, they did um, Nocturne Alley in the back arcade. They actually had uh, full sets of the Wizarding Wheezes and Gringotts. And they had Hagrid's Hut and the Chamber of Secrets. <laughs> And they set up Dolores Umbridge's office. They had as prison, um, as command. Yeah. yeah. 
Um, I think one of my favorite is that they set up a fantastic beast corner, meaning just new suitcase. And you could climb in and out of the suitcase. So they had set it up to, you could sneak in underneath to pop out of the suitcase. Um, Mm -hmm. One of my friends did that and she got stuck, but she eventually got out. (laughs) (laughs) That would have been us. Yeah. Yeah. She got And there's like arcade games. Yeah, and then there's all classic arcade games for free, like pinballs, yeah. more combat, Tekken. Mm-hmm. Like it's and a really do, fun bar in general. And like if you if you do decide you're gonna plan this and come and like pair it with going to that pop-up bar, um, they usually release they they'll do like trivia a couple of times, like Harry Potter trivia, and um sometimes they also do costume contests with the pop-ups. Mm-hmm. So there's like some fun stuff you can do in addition to that. They also have like art shows for mm-hmm. um, local artists to display their work during the like early hours of the night. How much time would you allot for Magic at Play? Uh, for normal people or? Yeah, yeah let's, <laughs> not let's, for normal. let's do how much time did you, because Paula and I've had this discussion because I have now closed are down two normal, separate events. Are you extra? <laughs> I have been the first and last person to leave two different events now in the last since October. What did we spend two hours at least? Was it two and two a half? Or two and a half. Yeah. Two and a half. So I think they say it's like an hour or something. Yeah, it's like 45 minutes. But, yeah. Hour. We we took our time. Like <laughs> and there's no one like pushing you through or anything. Like no, no not at all. And you can go backwards if you want to. And yeah, no, not at all. Yeah. Are there snacks? There are at the end in the shop. There's yeah. like um so there's a, a butter beer store. Cookie. Yeah. Yeah. There's some like cookies, a cupcake, um, like pretzels, I think, and stuff. Like a few things, um, in addition to like the bottled butter beer. Um, and you can the nice thing is you can actually so like if you are local, you don't want to spend the money, whatever, you don't think it's your vibe, but you still like Harry Potter, you can access the store for free obviously. <laughs> um, mm-hmm. And you can also though access the Butterbeer bar um, for free as well. So you can still do some immersive things without paying for the um, experience. They also, isn't there an exclusive wand? Yeah. They yeah. Have like a, yeah. So when like we went, houses. yeah. So when we went, it was a QR code you had to scan to pre-order it, but now they've updated that it's officially released for purchase. Okay. And is it's it like just a, a wand or is it like the magic caster? Like there's a bunch no, of things. I think it's just a wand. It's just, just a, a regular wand. wand. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Like but it's, it's actually really pretty. Like it, mm-hmm. um, it's nice. It was expensive though. Wasn't it? Like I didn't look at the price because you saw what I spent. So yeah. <laughs> I did myself that favor and didn't look at the wand. Yeah. I'll see. If it I looks cool though. Price. I kept telling myself after we did this pictures in the merch store and the butterbeer bar. And yeah. the owl post. I'm like, it's fine. It's fine. I got paid. Yeah. It's fine. It's fine. They Yolo, did. Yolo. You only live once. They, <laughs> they did say that they were going to have butterbeer on tap at some point. I don't know if they've yeah. done that yet. So far, it's just a bottled one. Was there and, other exclusive merch beyond the wand? Yeah, they had some yeah. t-shirts that were like specific. Um, that yeah. said like Harry Potter magic at play. Some of them said Chicago. Some of them didn't. They also had mugs and pins. I got the mm-hmm. pins and I got the Yeah, t-shirt. they had some cool pins. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And like a um, magnet. magnet. So they had yeah. some branded and the stuff postcards. that said like Chicago. Yeah, that and that was cute. They have also something you can access in the store without um, paying for the experiences. You can visit the Owl Post. So you can buy like a postcard and they'll mail it out for you right there. Mm-hmm. Just pretty cool. Um yeah, they had um, the. Mer- I would say the merch was pretty different from what you would see at like Harry Potter New York or like even like Universal. Okay. They did say um, that they did not get all the merch that they wanted that they expected for opening day. So it did look a little bare when we went through it. Like it was just mm-hmm. one wall of house robes, mostly for kids. Yeah, and, like and the house robes were not the the same. They were like quality. party city costumes. Yeah, it was. That's what I mean. It's like everything was yeah. kind of like almost like 
similar stuff what you could order maybe off like amazon <laughs> i don't know like it's, they didn't have like the same level of of quality i guess and as, i like, wonder if it's because like and i know as adults we all love this stuff but the more i hear about it, the more i see about it it makes me think of a children's museum yeah so like i would expect especially if you're paying for a ticket like that I'm not going to buy my kid the really nice robes, but if you have those cheapy robes that the kids are going to like go play through yeah. a playground in. Yeah. But yeah. it just seems more like children's museum style versus like some of the experience or the exhibit. Yeah. I feel like one of the, yeah. One of the only things that maybe like, I feel like the wand was definitely something you would see like at the parks yes. or um, the spirit the- jerseys. Yeah, yeah, the spirit yeah. jerseys are really nice. You got, I think that you got one of those, right, Anna? Like in those, yeah. those were what, like seventy or so, eighty something. They they were like I'm, really nice, though. They have yeah. for every house. I didn't look at the price because I'm just like <laughs> spirit jerseys. And this is what the New York store, because uh, Nicole and I like, talked yeah. about the spirit yeah. jersey prices. They've been running around seventy five. Yeah, it's, I feel like somewhere around there, but they had them for every house. I hadn't seen these ones before. They're really nice. Like, they're super cute. And they're, um, like, heavy, so I'm anticipating it'll be warm because they're, like, thick. And they had scarves, but they were, they were. Um, I think they either had the, like, lo- the logo patch on them or they said, like, Gryffindor, Ravenclaw. So, again, a little different than, like, you know, kind of like you said, maybe a little bit geared more towards you the audience that i some think like stuff. yeah i think sometimes they try to make these events they're like oh this will be great for kids forgetting that the audience like us are still going to show up like, and there was definitely had stuff Wednesdays. yeah for us yeah like yeah there was cute like they had but they had plenty of stuff i feel like for us with like the exclusive t-shirts and they did have pins like i hadn't seen like i got yeah. a birdie box pin that i'd never seen they had like some honeyduke section and the chocolate uh, um, frogs yeah so that That's was like one cute. of the things i did feel like was kind of missing like or i don't i guess i can't remember i don't maybe they didn't have it in the exhibition store but i think i was hoping that there'd be like some wizarding world candy type stuff um there really wasn't it was like the stuff you could get at like um like Barnes and Noble or Five Below, like the well, just technically typical. there was the Honey Dukes card. I just don't think that was for us to take. Yeah, like they they created a display <laughs> with like yeah. your typical like chocolate frog, but not yeah. like a not like yeah, but, not like a Honey Dukes. <laughs> yeah. I tried to take a lollipop; they were in there. <laughs> <laughs> Did it move or was it glued in? It was like glued in. I'm like, yeah, definitely oh. just for display, just a prop. <laughs> Yeah, okay. interesting. It was mostly just sweets, no like food, food. Okay. And there, it's worth calling out from what I could tell, um, because I listened to the your guys' podcast about the exhibition. Uh, from what I can tell, there were not bathrooms available throughout the experience. So if you needed to go, you had to leave uh, out of the like experience to go to the bathroom. There was only or, like, one bathroom that I saw. And that was yeah, like I was like, I didn't see, yeah, I was like, I didn't see any while we were going through it. So something to keep in mind if you're going to be in there for a while. Especially if you have kids. Yes. And and even I think at the end, I don't know that there's a bathroom in the store. I think you have to go out into the mall, use the mall bathroom. It's so curious so. that it's at a mall. Yeah. yeah. Well, it's a very nice mall. I know. It's just like when you said that it was a mall, I was like, oh, oh. <laughs> It's like right on Michigan. It's like quintessential Chicago experience going there. Like has an American girl doll store. So again, if you have kids, like it's pretty, it's pretty <laughs> cool because you can take them to the American girl doll store. You can set them up with like a tea, do the Harry Potter robes for their, um, the dolls. Oh. Then you could go to the Lego store, do Harry Potter Lego stuff. So I feel like you could build it up, especially for kids. Like um doing a full Harry Potter experience stuff. I would say the replay of the pop-up bar would not be kid friendly. <laughs> we don't um, know. But, <laughs> <laughs> but everything else, like you can really, I think because it's in the mall and where it's set, there's a lot you can do. And I would always recommend people get deep dish pizza if you're not vegan, because that's a Chicago staple. All right. Yeah. Any last things you would like to say about magic at play? Or any last questions, Paula? 
No, I think I asked everything I want to ask. I'm definitely coming. So one, you guys are going to have to go again. So yeah. Okay. So you're going to come to it. I, I want to. Are you going to bring the kids? I don't know that I can afford that. She's like, I don't want to, but. (laughs) Well, if you come, I'll go. Anna will go go. too. I'm volunteering her. It's it's about going with friends, I feel like. And that was one of the things, like, Danny, when you were like, she's going to go solo. I'm kind of like, well, is she nice? I'll meet up with her because it might be more fun to go with another nerd. So, (laughs) yeah. Yeah, I want to go. Unless they, like, hopefully, if it's going to go somewhere else. They like announce it beforehand, yeah. not like they did for freaking the exhibition. I am still bitter. You I are. am bitter. Party of one, two if you count Hansel. Um, I'm bitter. Philly was fun. Didn't you have fun? It was fun, but I would have much rather like driven. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and get I mean, I could have gone to a Philly game. That's but- fair. I mean, now the question is, it wasn't a big change for me because that that's my area. I went to college right outside of Philadelphia, so. Okay. And I live an hour and a half. I grew up an hour and a half from Philly, so. Yeah. <laughs> Did you go twice, Danny, or once? Twice-ish. Um, I went to the media event with a friend, and then I went the next day. So that's the twice. Okay. Yeah. Cool. So I've done Forbidden Forest twice. And then we did Atlanta once so far. Nice. I want to convince Anna to go to Atlanta. My current theory is because. Not a PTO until next year. We can go on a weekend. We can leave Friday night. Yeah, it doesn't close until like February. Maybe we can go in January, but I'm also trying to go to Universal. <laughs> it's only, you were just it's only five and a half hours from Universal. Just do it all on the same trip. You were just there last week. I know. That's a but direct a flight. Weekend. Paula and I took it. Yeah. The flight from Atlanta to Chicago to Atlanta is not bad. I did it for the Downton Abbey thing. Uh, Downton Abbey exhibition. Which was very fun. If you're into Downton Abbey. I, I recently watched them. So I yeah, never seen them. Same. I didn't think it was my thing, but it was. It was really good. Yeah, I, I definitely want to go to Chicago. Um, you know, I have to book for it. But, uh, and I'd probably have to fly Frontier. Honestly, no, you should look. Um, I was going to say you should look on Southwest because I find a lot of cheap flights like on Southwest. Yeah. Like down to Orlando, I imagine the return is like the same. Like sometimes I've gotten like a round trip flight for like 100 and. 20 bucks. Yeah, but on weekdays. Which airport to fly into for Magic at Play and which airport to fly into for LeakyCon? I um, would say it doesn't really matter. Probably the closest is like O'Hare. Okay. Probably this the most I've been getting asked I fly so midway I'm because opportunity. I fly midway because of Southwest and it's it's the cheapest and they have free baggage. So Midway is in the city. It's on the south side. Mm -hmm. So you get to actually fly into Chicago, but it's just very difficult to navigate. And it's not near public transportation. Like you still got to walk away to the orange line, which is what goes Mm -hmm. by Midway. For ease of public transportation, O'Hare, even though it's further out, it's right off of the blue line. And it actually feeds into the airport. So you could take the blue line without leaving the airport. And there's a yeah. lot more Ubers and cabs and it's right off and the more, way. So it's a straight shot into, ow, into Chicago. And I'd say more airlines fly into O'Hare as well. Yeah, more airlines fly into O'Hare, but the, I mean, the cheap ones fly into Midway. <laughs> yeah, like South. Well, Southwest, I think, flies into O'Hare now too, but it's limited. Yeah, I but, think now they do. Yeah, good points about the public trans. I would say a lot of people fly. Yeah. I mean, it doesn't really matter ultimately because you're going to have to travel into the city from either direction, basically. Okay. Yeah. Good question. What's the question I needed? Well, I had someone ask me and I'm like, I'm going to need to know this information. Yeah, that's a good question. Chicago's yeah. going to be great. We're going to have a great time. We're going to have so many Pottergrammers descending upon the city. 
descending <laughs> sky. Uh, Paula, thank you guys for joining us and filling us in on Magic at Play. Before we go, why doesn't everyone say their name and where you can find you on socials? Well, I'm Anna, and I can be found at, at Latina Hufflepuff on Instagram. I'm Ashley, and I can be found at Magical Ashley on Instagram. And I'm Paula, Unconceivable on Instagram and TikTok. And that's it. Yeah. <laughs> and then in case you haven't known, I'm Danny. I can be found at Mandrakes and Mischief and at Creating Magic Podcast. And until next time, keep creating. Wow.